Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of our slash entitled parents. In today's episode, Karen thinks my insulin and syringes are for drug use long. EM demand store stays open because I am a paying customer. Entitled parents think shoot first ask questions later is a good motto. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. Karen thinks my insulin and syringes are for drug use long. It was just as I was at deep sleep's precipice that Karen had returned with the conductor. Let me tell you people, this guy was wearing the face that said this better be good or else. Hey everybody. I was listening to Reddit stories on a popular video hosting site, and it reminded me of my own related story. Context, this took place during the summer of 2015 or 2016. I'm, presently, a 40-year-old man, and our Karen in this story was a woman I presume to be a step or two above 50. Also, I'm diabetic, so I have to take two types of insulin constantly. The one in this story is the 24-hour slow-release kind that is metabolized over the course of a day. The event I was riding an Amtrak across a fairly considerable distance to visit a close friend. She lived nearly a thousand miles, 1,609.34 kilometers, away from me, so this ride would be a bit long. On a good trip 10 hours. On a bad one, anything between 12 to 16 hours depending on conditions. If you've never been on an Amtrak, and you're riding in coach like me, picture the coach section of nearly any airplane, now make it look old and outdated. The passenger cars are divided into two levels, the downstairs contained the bathrooms and people with disabilities section, while the upstairs is pretty much just all seats. I was in the A.D.A or people with disabilities section. It was on the razor's edge of my bedtime so I needed to take my insulin. I produce my kit out of a box that looks like it should be containing the T-virus or something, and begin to prepare my needle and medicine. Excuse me? The goosebumps raising and rather shrill cry of an indignant older woman rang out. I look her way to see a woman between 50 to 70 years old, riding with a small toddler that was passed out in the seat next to her. I was dog-tired and wanting to go to bed. Normally I'm a bit more witty or cunning with my responses, but I merely said, what do you want lady? It's at this point she launches into a tirade that she has to stop every few words, then resume, because she would lean over to ensure she hadn't woken the toddler wrapped up in their blanket like an adorable baby burrito. She outright accuses me of taking a very illegal substance in public, how I should be ashamed, this is what is wrong with my generation, and so on and so forth. I did my best to both show her, and explain to her, this isn't what she thinks it is, and that this is important medicine. I even show her my medical alert bracelet. She scoffs and says anybody can order those, and I likely used that bracelet as an excuse to be able to sleep in the far more lucrative ADA section, and accused me of faking my disability in order to get less expensive tickets. I was shocked, but like the flash of lightning my give a damn was there and gone in the blink of an eye. I tell her to screw off, leave me alone, and that I wanted to sleep. She stands up and said something to the effect of how she was the last angry woman in America, and how she wasn't going to stand for this. Good for you. Pee off. She did indeed pee off, and I took the toddler's example and encapsulated myself in my blanket and tried to get to sleep. It was just as I was at deep sleep's precipice that Karen had returned with the conductor. Let me tell you people, this guy was wearing the face that said this better be good or else. Karen points me out, and tells the instructor about how I was doing drugs, was unhinged, and frightened her toddler who was still so deep into dreamland I was convinced this kid could sleep through an atomic blast. The conductor sighs and asks if this was true. I informed him I did take my medicine, and indeed I did produce a syringe in order to do so, and if necessary to de-escalate the situation he's welcome to inspect them. For the record, I wasn't entirely sure about the legality of whether or not a conductor can conduct a search of a passenger's containers or contents. I honestly only complied so I could get some sleep. 
I hand over my nuclear football-like container, and he rummages through it. See? I told you he had drugs. Karen unleashes, having raised her voice so high that pretty much now everyone in the small ADA compartment was awake and a hostage like me in Karen's tirade. The toddler wakes up and the poor little guy wriggles out of his blanket burrito and begins to fuss. The conductor hands back my equipment and turns to address the Karen. It is at this point I was so exhausted from the train, hour of the day, and stress that the story gets difficult to totally confirm. The conductor was not pleased with her. He explained that I was indeed taking insulin and nothing else. He explained how the needles weren't the correct size, the bottle is clearly full of a clear liquid, and many other facts that prove my side of the case. He informs her that she was in big trouble for wasting his time, disturbing the other passengers, and mostly for harassing me. He explained that had he not been more scrutinizing I could have been majorly screwed over, and that he would have had to call numerous federal agencies, where I likely would have been detained for absolutely no reason. Karen still insisted she knew better because she lived through the 60s or some crap. The conductor informs her that there would be consequences for her actions and to remain in her seat and be quiet while he resolved this issue. I don't know what happened to Karen and what I presume to be her grandchild. All I know is when I woke up I was several stops further than I was when I took my medicine and my stop was next. Some people. EM demands store stays open because I am a paying customer. This is a story about my own M and the poor store that had to deal with her. My mom has a habit of taking hours to shop. Even in the smallest of stores. We arrived at the store about three hours before they closed and started shopping. I had naive hope that I would actually be out before they closed. I quickly found things I liked however my mom took a lot longer. Looking at every section and every rack. When we finally got to the changing rooms an hour and a half later I took about 15 to 20 minutes with trying the clothes on and showing my mom for her approval. My mom however took about an hour to try things on. She would stay in the room for 5 minutes before coming out and showing me. And then going back in for another 5 minutes. I noticed the store clearing out and got nervous. Then I heard the 15 minutes to close announcement and called out to my mom. Me, hey mom they are closing soon we need to hurry up. M, I know I heard. I won't take long. Just a few more pieces of clothing. I saw an employee start to clean out the surrounding dressing rooms. When she finished she came to me. Employee, are you two almost done? We close in about five minutes. Me, yeah I'm sorry we should be done soon. Then my mom came out of the changing room with a few clothes in her hands and about 15 still in the room. M, okay I'm done now, but I don't want those so you can put them back now. The max clothing per room was six and I felt bad that I hadn't paid any attention to how many mom mom took in. I apologized to the employee who looked annoyed before I followed my mom to the checkout. You would maybe think that we cashed out and left after this, but no. My mom then saw that there were movie bins next to the checkout and decided to take a look in them. And I mean take a look. She didn't look in for a particular movie. No she wanted to see all the movies they had. After about five minutes the closing announcements went off, but my mom did not move. She seemed immune to the words going over the PA system. Attention all shoppers the time is now 8 p.m. and the store is now closed. Please bring all your purchases to the front cash. Thank you and have a great night. Nothing. Not even looking up she continuums to rifle through the bins looking at every movie. After a minute or two an employee came up. Employee, I'm ma'am we need you to come to the checkout now so we can cash you out. We are closed. M, what? Employee, we are closed now. We need you to come cash out. M, you can't close until all the customers are gone and I'm still here. Employee, we are keeping the cash open for you, but we are closed. Please bring your stuff to the cash, and I will cash you out. 
M, no you will stay open until I am done. I am a paying customer and I'm giving you lots of business, so you will stay open. Employee, please bring you stuff to the front within five minutes. And the employee walked away to start doing more closing duties. However my mom did not take orders from anyone and kept going. Me, mom should I bring our stuff to the checkout so they can at least start ringing our stuff in? M, no they can wait. Me, but mom they are closed we should go. It was at that point that the back lights went off. There were still lights on at the front of the store, but it was clear that the store was closed and we should leave. M in a passive aggressive tone, you know, they really shouldn't turn the lights off when there are still customers. Me, well they are closed and probably trying to get as much done as they can. M, it's rude. I'm a customer and they should stay open. Finally my mom gave up and we went to the cash. I apologized to the employees but my mom started berating them for turning off the lights. M, you know, it's rude to try and force paying customers out. You need to stay open until the customers are done. Employee, ma'am we are still open enough to cash you out, but the store closed about 20 minutes ago. M, you need to stay open until I'm finished. You do not get to push customers to leave. The employee simply nodded and continued to cash out our cart as my mom went on about stores needing to stay open for customers' satisfaction. Finally about 30 minutes after the store closed we left. As the employee let us out I apologized again. Dealing with my mom is something no one should have to ever deal with. I moved out a few months after this incident. About four years ago. I feel bad for anyone that needs to deal with her. Entitled parents think shoot first ask questions later is a good motto. If this doesn't fit delete. So I am the oldest kid of three and my parents typically push the oldest harder than the rest. Which is normal, until you force the kid into doing it the way the parents want. Like enforcing the driver's license rules of the road only on the older kid. In the US, at least in MD, you can't have anyone except family in the car with you until you pass the probation period. My dad's teaching method is basically, you do it my way, or you are on your own. I don't care what it is as long as it's logical. Meaning if he thinks it's logical, then he accepts it. If not, then he insults me for making a dumb, curse word, decision. Now, most people would instinctively defend themselves, or at least try to explain why they make that decision. I try that and get pounded by that there's no logic behind that and you are very unreasonable. Come talk to me when you have a reason behind that. This is getting to the point where I don't tell my parents, mom included because my dad always gets involved, of anything that involves a serious decision. I am 23 and my dad has been controlling everything I do. I got my first job at 16, because my dad wanted me to get a job earlier than he did, he got his at 18, even though I had no common sense of what was the right thing to do at the time. P.S. I got fired from that job for doing something that my dad later insulted me for getting fired. He found out I got fired because he goes to the place where I worked quite frequently. A week after I got fired, my dad finally got around to explaining what I should have done to avoid being fired along with jabs of how dumb I am, because he's never been fired or lost a job before. For everyone who doesn't work for the federal government or are international, the federal government offers great benefits and basically encourages employees to work there by offering pension for time worked. There are retirement benefits, healthcare benefits, I get the jokes about how expensive US healthcare is, I have gone to the hospital for breaking my wrist, employee protection, and all of that. The job that is currently pushing my buttons is working for the US federal government. For background, I still live with my parents because I want to save up until I can find a house to move into. It's TSA, Transportation Security Administration, or the the blue shirts at the airport. It's the absolute lowest you can go in the federal security field. The whole reason I picked the job is I got insulted for choosing FBI and US Capitol Police as one of my application attempts.
The reason why my dad has the choice to insult me is he thinks that I will not pass the psychological evaluation that all police have to go through. Of course, my dad insults my thought of even attempting to pass the basic test of how educated you are, it's a requirement for federal agencies to check to make sure you actually paid attention in school. TSA only requires a high school degree and is low stress compared to the top agencies according to my dad. I told him that a majority of your day is not what you see on the news. While the low stress is pretty accurate to what I have seen from taking flights, the next thing is what really grinds me. You are carrying a gun, are you sure you aren't going to turn it on someone? You know how angry you get when I talk to you. Yes, it's because you don't filter anything and make Gordon Ramsay seem nice. One of the things I need to do before I can even start working for the job is to fill out many forms for retirement and all of those things for pension to make sure I can still live after I retire. Many banks have very low interest rates, so my dad wants me to put as much of my paycheck into retirement accounts so I can earn at a faster rate. Why would you need to have some income from TSA? You have some money from your retail job. Do you really think you can blow all of your retail money by the next federal fiscal year? I am not going into what a fiscal year is because it gets really technical. It's not like a regular calendar year is all I'm going to explain. US government is weird. If you end up needing money, come ask me for money and I will help you out. No. Not going to do that, dad. You are just going to criticize how I managed to blow 6k in a year.